Hey everybody, it's time for another edition of Random Thoughts. You know, things that aren't long enough for a full podcast or blog post, but that I'd like to mention anyway. First up, it's election year in the U.S. God help us all. I'm going to try to stay as far as I can away from this one for as long as possible, but I guess by summer it'll be a whole thing, monopolizing the news cycle even here in faraway Spain. Maybe I'm even being too optimistic with by summer. I guess the Iowa caucus is happening in a couple of days or maybe even tomorrow, so the 2024 election could be all over the Spanish news by Wednesday. Anyway, I'm going to avoid politics to the best of my ability. Why? Well, I don't actually like either of the U.S. political parties, and I don't believe that my voting decision is a major part in some epic struggle of good versus evil. Although I can understand why career politicians would want us to think that it is for fundraising purposes. A lot of history happens completely outside of party politics, and it's going to happen whether you like it or not, no matter who you vote for. A lot of the obsession with polls and such is just spectator sports for the kids who hated jocks in high school, and bureaucracy is lame. Anyway, Americans abroad can vote in presidential elections by asking for a ballot from their home state at votefromabroad.org. It's always worked for me, but I think you have to sign up again each election year. Oops, did I forget to introduce myself? Hey everybody, it's Daniel. Welcome back to another episode of Spain to Go, the best podcast in the entire multiverse for all things Spain. This is episode 62, and it's a couple of random thoughts. Election year and quitting Twitter. So, now that I've gone over why I don't think politics is the most important thing to spend my time on this year, I'd like to talk about a few ideas I have for the improvement of American politics. None of these seem very likely to happen, but they're just some ideas that I'm throwing out there as a guy with a podcast. For example, we could have six-week election campaigns rather than election campaigns lasting a whole year or more. That's how they do it here in Spain, and miraculously, people still get elected. And it's super relaxing only having to pay attention for six weeks of campaign. We could limit campaign spending and get rid of lobbyists. Big Pharma has way too much power. So do a bunch of other lobbies. It's depressing to think about. We could put a strict age limit, say 65 years old, on elected officials. After that, send them all off to a farm in the country. And we could reduce politicians' salaries to be in line with the salaries of, for example, school teachers. Now, you may be saying that without the high salaries, politics won't attract all the best people. To which I respond, does it really appear that we've got all the best people in politics now? Like I said, none of that seems very likely to make it through Congress. So let's move on to point number two for today. Quitting Twitter, or should I say X. This is related to the election year point in a way. I've been off Twitter for a while now. Actually, about a year and a half. I didn't announce I'm quitting Twitter or anything because who cares? And I didn't do it because I'm offended by anything Elon Musk said or did. Truth be told, I find Uncle Elon to be pretty hilarious, and I find the outrage he causes in a certain type of person to be even more hilarious. No, I quit Twitter, or I guess now it's called X, because it was giving me the wrong idea about what's going on in the world and stressing me out about things I can't impact at all. See, I spent a long time getting my U.S. news mainly from social media. I hadn't actually visited the country in more than a decade. And according to, apparently, people who make a living by saying outrageous things on Twitter, we were practically on the verge of a civil war over there. 
when I actually went back to visit in the summer of 2022 and found that it was the same prosperous country full of diverse people getting along far better than could reasonably be expected, I just decided that the pundits were wrong and hopped off the platform altogether. My profile is still up, but I never had a big following or anything, and I don't miss it at all. Anyway, I have thought quite a bit about social media and its influence on people. Basically, Mike Tyson sums up my thoughts with his quote, Social media made y'all way too comfortable with disrespecting people and not getting punched in the face for it. You remember Mike Tyson famously bit off Evander Holyfield's ear in a boxing match, how he manages to remain in the spotlight decades later is mysterious, but he's still around commenting and uh, I love that quote. Say what you want about Mike, he's right about social media's impact on people's behavior. So, is social media making you an asshole? It might be. The fact is, I'm online a lot, and most of what I say on the blog or on social isn't particularly controversial. But even so, people attack me in ways that literally never do in a face-to-face conversation, because, well, I might punch them in the face if they did. Old Elon famously said that Twitter is the de facto public town square, and so failing to protect free speech there fundamentally undermines democracy. And I agree. But it should also be said that if you were walking across the actual town square in meat space, and you saw a couple of people of questionable intelligence arguing about issues entirely out of their control, you certainly wouldn't think, perhaps I'll go over and chime in. No, you'd walk right the fuck on by and leave them to their argument. What if one party was a C-list actor who had just claimed to have solved the world's greatest geopolitical problems and the other was a journalist from BuzzFeed who had stepped up to accuse him or her of apology for genocide? Doesn't matter. You'd still walk by because in real life you'd understand it's none of your goddamn business. Online, as we know, people act very differently and get all up in each other's faces for no reason at all, whenever they feel like it, protected by the fact that most of what you say online has absolutely no real-life consequences. Occasionally, of course, someone gets fired or cancelled for tweeting the wrong thing, but much more frequently, people act like unhinged lunatics all over social media for years, without ever having to face a cancel mob. They can even be unhinged lunatics anonymously if they want. Anyway, my recent visit confirmed it. America is great, and y'all need to calm down. Of course, the U.S. has some obvious problems, and I know that my patriotism, such as it is, is probably even controversial to some. But let me tell you, having lived abroad for almost 20 years and visited a lot of other countries in the meantime, everywhere has some obvious problems. The thing is, Americans just tend not to know anything about the history of everywhere else, so they assume our history is uniquely terrible. As far as I can tell, it's not. The U.S. didn't invent racism or gun violence or police brutality or homelessness or massive economic inequality or obnoxious populist politicians. All those things exist in other places, too. So cheer up. America, as the kids are calling it, is a pretty great country. Anybody who says we're going to need another civil war to straighten things out is only saying that because they've never opened a history book or carried a heavy pack uphill for several miles. Read Rebel Yell by S.C. Gwynn or The Personal Memoirs of U.S. Grant, for example, and see how it went the last time Americans decided to slaughter each other over political differences. Then decide if we can maybe just work things out peacefully this time. Also, take my advice and get the fuck off Twitter if you haven't already. 
The pundits get paid for being outrageous, and the media makes money off your fear and anger. Don't play their game. That's all I've got for today. Hope you're doing well wherever you are. Feel free to subscribe to this podcast or give me a review or some stars if you're on one of the platforms that allows stars. You can check me out on YouTube, Learn Spanish with Daniel. I am there teaching Spanish. I have a series of videos in the works for the beginning of this 2024 election year, and uh, they have nothing to do with politics. I'm just teaching Spanish over there. It's fun. If you are especially a little bit more advanced, like not an absolute beginner, but an intermediate level of Spanish, you'll probably find more videos that will help you out. I have been in Spain for, like I said, almost 20 years, and I am just sharing what I know about the Spanish language. You can donate to this podcast, expatmadrid.com slash donate. That is the page for donations. You can send three euros, you can send 300 euros, whatever floats your boat. I'm very happy to receive any and all donations, help pay my luxurious lifestyle out here in Barcelona, where cost of living is way beyond most people's salaries. Over at expatmadrid.com, there's a lot more writing. I write about life in Spain and also whatever else I feel like. There are hundreds of articles over there, most of which have not been made into podcast episodes and probably never will be. But uh, little by little, I am adding to the podcast as well. Nothing more for today. I hope you have a great day. Stay out of the election year madness and talk soon. Bye.